When Sony got in touch with me and told me that they had all three of these little primes for me to uh, try out for a week or two, I thought pretty much the same thing. I always think, why can't it just be F2? Now after using them for a bit, I'm pretty convinced that I don't really feel like you need F2 anymore. <laughs> Now I don't know how to build a lens and obviously there comes into factors like pricing and size and um, how easy it is to manufacture to bring the prices down. They're really really nice lenses and they're just really fun to use. So I've got the 40mm on my A9 Mark II here. I was originally using all these lenses on the A7C because they pair up really really nicely with such a small camera. Uh, but even on the A9 Mark II, I just love how it looks and it just, for some reason, I don't know, makes me want to go out and take photos with it. I tried all of them and I'm going to throw a whole bunch of photos up so you guys can see for yourself and I'll say which one they were for, but I'm kind of reviewing these lenses as a trio. Originally I thought that the 40mm would probably be my least favorite. I just find, you know, I've tried the Batiste 40mm, the Zeiss one that came out quite a while ago, and I just wasn't really a fan. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere for me. You know, I shoot mostly 24mm and 55mm when I'm shooting a wedding, but after using it, I think it's actually my favorite one. I do like all of them, and it's really hard for me to pick. If I had to, I'd probably have to get two of them and just buy the 24 and the 50 because I think I could do just about anything I ever do with these two lenses. Uh, however, if you're only going to buy one, I think probably the 40 mil is going to be the way to go. Talking about build quality, they do have a really nice metal construction and they have pretty much everything you could ask for with a lens like this. It has the function button, which you can program to eye focus or focus hold or whatever you want to set it to. The AFMF switch, which you guys know is my favorite thing. Now I'm going to jump straight to image quality. First, I would usually talk about a few other things, but um, there's a couple of things to touch on. So firstly, I noticed straight away that they have pretty much no chromatic aberration. Uh, when I was comparing the 24mm 2.8 here to my 24mm G Master, which I'm filming on now, uh, the G Master has way more chromatic aberration, but I don't really care about it. <laughs> it's just a, something to note that these are really clean in terms of aberrations. In terms of sharpness, they're also really fantastic. They do fall off a little bit towards the edges compared to the higher end lenses. They do start to fall off around f9 to f11. After that, you know, they start to get a little bit soft again. But yeah, really nice, really impressive in terms of sharpness and image quality. Uh, one thing to note, they do have pretty bad distortion, like really bad, but it corrects it automatically in camera. And, you know, it's not really a big deal. They kind of had to make some sacrifice somewhere, I guess, to keep the cost down and to keep the size down. So it seems like distortion is where they let most of it go. However, if you're filming or shooting JPEG or whatever, it's not going to show up. And in the raw files, the Lightroom correction fixes it really easily. In terms of autofocus, they're really fast, really accurate. There's really not much to talk about now in terms of autofocus. All the Sony lenses, you can pretty much just assume they focus really well pretty much silent and they work really well for video autofocus as well. I really don't think it's anything to worry about these days at all. When I was walking around the city with the A7C and these three lenses, I kind of chopped and changed between them a little bit, uh, but I took photos with all of them and I really, really enjoyed having them on the camera. To me, one of the most important factors of photography is just enjoying using your gear. You know, if you really like using it, you're probably gonna take better photos, from my experience anyway. It's half the reason I have a Fuji X100F because I just really dig it. I love taking photos with it. I love using it. You know, it's slow and <laughs> the images aren't anywhere near as good as my A9s, but I just don't care. So for me, there's really not any downsides to these lenses other than maybe they could be a little bit fast aperture. But like I said, I don't think it's a big deal. And honestly, I would be fine shooting the 24 and the 50 at a wedding, especially if it was during the day, it's really only going to come into an issue when it's much darker at night. Um, and you know, if you're in the reception or something like that, 2.5 can be a big difference compared to 1.4. Uh, you know, you're at least doubling your ISO there, so it can be a little bit of an issue. As always, guys, I'm going to chuck a bunch of these photos that you're seeing on the video in the description in raw format so you guys can download them and have a play for yourself. But yeah, if you want to check them out, go and check out that Dropbox link in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to be talking about my wedding booking process and how I go about it, the software I use, and just how I interact with my clients. So watch out for that one. I'll see you in the next video.